from Juhas McGinley Stadium in Penn Hills. It is week nine of the WPI and tonight the Shimmer area Titans Penn Hills to take off the division leading team that you know relies heavily on the passing game uh, sophomore quarterback Keegan Smetanka um, his dad uh, Brian was an all-state quarterback for Shaler back in 94 and led them to their first first playoff berth in history but uh, his son's not faring too bad right now either uh, almost 1400 yards passing and 11 touchdowns last week threw for 301 yards on 21 of 34 passing with three total touchdowns in that loss to Kiski. His favorite target last week was Joe D. Sabato, who had six catches for a buck 55 and two of those touchdowns. So this team can and will throw the ball. Question is, with this cool air and misting rain that's coming down, are they going to be able to? This is the type of game that you would think that the team that can run the football would be better served. It's a little tough to throw, especially in that mist. Yes. I think it's, it's just, uh, it doesn't absorb anywhere. It just kind of like lays, and it's going to lay on that football. It's going to be tough to handle. They do have a uh, leading rusher. Josh Miller is a uh, senior running back, 5'11", 195. Uh, 403 yards rushing, three touchdowns. Also, the team's leading tackler on defense is a linebacker. And his brother plays at uh, Akron. His brother Jake is at Akron right now. So, you know, the Indians will get the ball to start tonight's contest as the Shaler area Titans have deferred the opening kickoff to half number two. And we are underway at Penn Hills. Kickoff along the ground, taken at the 23-yard line. Coming this way, Natel Mitchell looking for somewhere to go. Breaks a tackle across the 30 and gets swept under at about the 32-yard line. So 
Now the Penn Hills offense get its first opportunities if the Duggar brothers can continue their ways. Older brother Jaden, one of the seniors, got to take the walk across the field tonight, and younger brother Jules was with him. They connected three times last week at Fox Chapel. Jules is in the shotgun. As What's going on, guys? Wait an, official to, wait an official to get to, into his position. Amir Key to Duggar's right. Trips to the slot to Duggar's right. He'll throw that way. And the pass too high for Brendan Hill. Brennan Hill caught the game-winning touchdown when you were here a couple weeks ago against North Hills with two seconds left. Yeah, that was a, quite a game and quite a finish for sure. You always love to have those. Boy, could you imagine games. if North Hills held on for that one? Victories over in Penn Hills and, and Pine Richland. Yeah, they would be firmly in the driver's seat in this conference, but like we said, like they're just, they're just beating each other up here at the top, and we're just going to see what's going to have to shake out. Key with the whole right side has a first down across the 40, out to the 45-yard line. They pick up a 14. That's a first down for Penn Hills. Of course, Amir Key, uh, I think you alluded to that North Hills game. I remember being here for that. He uh, got a little banged up but did come back. Good to see him still firing in all cylinders. Key again follows his blockers, tries to go right. Picks up a couple before being wrapped up by Logan Berniser. A gain of gonna, two. We're going to be hearing that game, that name a lot tonight. Logan Berniser, yes. Um, 6'7, 295 tackle. He's got offers from Clarion and Notre Dame College currently. And he's also a pretty good basketball player. Imagine him at inside. 6'7, 295. It's like a Charles Barkley type. Yes. Key, the workhorse, looks for somewhere to go. Slithers away. He looked like he was going to be tackled back uh, before the midfield stripe, but is able to get out to the 45-yard line of Shaler. And it'll be another first down. Looked like he was going to go down and somehow managed to elude the tackles. Yeah, he's able to shake loose there. Um... Looked like he was bottled up and uh, you know, found a little found a little squeaky and slipped through a tackle and uh, into Shaler territory go to the Penn Hills offense. Toss right, Key trying to find a lane. And picks up about six, maybe seven. Aside from that first play, all Amir Key, the last four for Penn Hills. This is uh, obviously the strategy they want to take is to try to grind this one out. Now we mentioned in this misty rain, running the football would be the key, no pun intended. <laughs> but the Indians trying to set up that running game. The first, pa the first play was a pass, and Jules Duggar threw it too high. And he's going to attempt his second pass to the game. Launch, he went downfield, has a man near the sideline. And nice defensive play, batting it away, was Josh Miller. There's Josh Miller making a play. I mentioned him earlier. Uh, force offensive uh, rushing leader and tackle leader. And there he is making a nice play on a, on a passing play. Third and four for the Indians. And we'll call it five. First third down they've faced so far. Dogger keeps it himself, has the first down. And about the 31 yard line, a pickup of nine. Nice job on the read option. He had Natel Mitchell. In front, Jules kept himself, picked up the nine, and got the Indians' third first down of this drive. Opening possession of the game. We are scoreless. Penn Hills and Shaler. 
Penrose drive began back at their own 31 yard line. Mitchell right side across the 30. Inside the 25 down to the 23 yard line. Nice gain of eight on his first carry of the night. Gives him seven, I guess. Mitchell again, this way, inside the 20, the 15, pushed out of bounds at the 11-yard line. For a pickup of 12 and another Indian first down just outside the 10-yard line. Indians will be able to get another first down to get to the one. Penn Hill's getting it done without, you know, having to rely on that possession down, that third down they've only had at one time. Uh, picking up first down in two plays, that's been a very helpful. Mitchell now with 20 yards. Jules rolls right, left-handed quarterback into the end zone. Rayon Strader, touchdown, Penn Hills. Strader in there again, huh? He likes to score touchdowns when I'm here, apparently. <laughs> he got himself open in the end zone. Duggar, the left-handed quarterback, rolled to his right, threw off his body, and had uh, was able to find Strader in the end zone. And it was in between uh, defenders, too. He, he threaded the needle on that pass right in between two Shaler defenders. Nice pass. Nicely done by him. And the kick is up and good. Penn Hill 7, Shaler nothing. 8.02 to go here, first quarter. You're watching the Penn Hills Indians Football Network. Ten plays, 69 yards for the Indians. Duggar to Schrader, 11 yards. That was Jules Duggar's first completed pass. He was 0 for 2 at that point. And Shayla will get out to the 25-yard line. Caden Orga on the return. All right, here comes the Shayla offense. Let's see what they... Uh have in store for us here. See if they uh, try to lean on Miller or if they're gonna stick to that passing attack. Number one, 
Shaler keeps it on the ground. Josh Miller. For maybe a yard. That was Keith Condon with the tackle for Penn Hills. There's a host of Indians. A generous one yard gain there. I didn't look like he got to the line of scrimmage, but. Smetanka will go under center. I formation behind him. That's Miller deep. With Augie Tortoria in the front as the fullback. But Smetanka will roll this way and throw. Has a man underneath. Pass completed to 40. Out to the 42 yard line is Austin Timko. Not a penalty flag back at the 24. That's going to be a holding call against the Shale Area Titans. Well, you know, they typically get a really nice play and then they get a holding call, so there's a reason why he probably had a really nice play. <laughs> that's, <laughs> clo that's close to a 30-yard flip in field position. Absolutely. All, all the way back. Said about across the 40. They're back at the, about the 15. Wait, the 14. So 28 yards. Matanka will throw. And too high for everybody. Now it's third and a long way to go. A lot of pressure coming <coughs> up the middle there from the Penn Hills defense. Knocked him down for the first time. Well, it's not real hard to pick out Logan Bessemer out there. He is a big dude. <laughs> here at right tackle. Smetanka. Screen, left side. And the Indians are there. Miller will get out to the original line of scrimmage. Another penalty flag. Let's see what the officials have to say. Dead ball, personal foul against the Indians. Oh, boy. Well, the 15 yards will give them enough for the first down. Yep. Had them in fourth and 10 instead. Now, ball gets out past the 40. You give... Uh, Give Shaler some, some life here. Penalty gets him a first down. Well, they're about uh, out where Timko caught the uh, Smetanka pass. Yeah, Smetanka keeps it himself for three. He's not a bad runner, Smetanka. And the Penn Hills defense is right there. Luke Signetti will lose a yard. That'll be third and nine. Clock rolling, 5.20 to go here in the opening period. Penn Hill 7, Shaler nothing. Smetanka's so pass too high for Tortoria. 
And now the Shaler punt team will come on. So Penn Hill defense stiffens up after the personal foul penalty gave Shaler one there and uh, forcing a punt now. It's Miller punting for them. Oh boy. Gets a kick away. And they're gonna call roughing the kicker penalty there. Now well, sure on that one, he was in the grasp when he kicked it. I mean, he lost control of the ball. Doesn't he automatically become a runner at that point? I mean, he did get the kickoff, but I'm not so sure about that. John Ladon does not like to call, and he's, I think he's correct. You're right. Once he loses control, he becomes a runner. And that's why he wants a timeout here. He wants to. <laughs> Dawn is hot. Okay, this is the second time this drive that his team has uh, been victimized by a penalty, personal foul penalty, no, nonetheless, that is that's given the ball back to Shaler when the Indians should have it. So, how about? A third chance here. Pass complete to De Sabato. Pick up about six. They get another personal foul, they're going to be in the red zone. <laughs> Pass complete again to Sabato inside to 30, down to the 27. It's a first down, a pickup of 10. Third first down of this drive for Shaler. First one they've. Uh, I don't want to say earned, but first one not by penalty. Right. Nice ten yard pickup there though. Boy, that Penn Hills defense is all over that play. That's a loss of three for Miller. And again, Condon on a tackle for Penn Hills. Yes. Screen pass this way. Miller with a little bit of room to run inside the 20, down inside the 15 yard line. Shaler area Titans with some life here, taking advantage of the opportunities with those penalties. Here they go into the red zone here. Ball trying, to 14. Trying to make 
get in a position and tie this game up here. Tortoria in front of Miller. Smetanka under center. And it'll be Tortoria, the fullback. Down to the 12. This will be the 12th play of this drive. Only 52 yards and eight carries on the year for Augie. Make that nine. To Sabato from the slot. Smetanka throwing towards the end zone, has a man and a pass. Caught for the Shaler touchdown. Oh, no, they're going to say it hit the ground. I don't know about that one. Tortoria looked like he came down with it. But the officials win all arguments. And another third down for Shaler. Instant replay aside. <laughs> they win all arguments. <laughs> Screen pass, left side, and Penn Hills is there. Miller caught it. He'll lose the two yards. And now it'll be fourth down. Yeah, that screen pass worked pretty well a few plays ago, but uh, looked like Penn Hill smartened up to it a little bit, and they will force a field goal attempt. 21-yard field goal attempt. Smetanka will hold Jack Keenan. We'll do the kicking. Kick is up. And the kick is good. So 101 to go here in quarter number one. It's Penn Hills seven, Shaler three here on the Indians Football Network. That was a six minute and 59 second drive. Yep, two personal foul penalties. Sixteen plays. One, two, three, four. Fourteen. I don't know, maybe I missed a uh, couple. Penalties. I'm sorry, the penalties. Oh. Sixteen plays with the penalties. Yeah, if you count the pen yeah. Taylor gets themselves on the board here. First quarter time. Winding down, Penn Hill's offense has been on the sideline for a long time. Time of possession, Penn Hill's four minutes, Shaler seven minutes. Rounded by a second each way. And the Indians will start at their own 20. Levi Santana. So we should be Santana Levi, Levi on the return. Second time out here after Penn Hills went down the field pretty effortlessly the first time. Only one third down. Here we go. Doggers throws right side. Looking for a block, gets one. And we'll get close to the first down. That's Santana Levi. So pick up of nine, second down and one.
Mir Key with a hole across the 40 for a first down. Spun down at the 43, a pickup of 14. And Penn Hills with another first down, under 30 seconds to go here in quarter number one. Nice burst of speed there from Key. Able to get loose in some space. Picking up a nice gain, 13, first down, Penn Hills. Again, Key, again with a big hole. And again with a first down, this time only 13. I think 57 yards-ish already here in quarter number one as this quarter expires. So after one, it's Penn Hill seven, Shaler three here on the Indians Football Network. I to tell you, as an old schooler, I like that Shaler offense. You don't see too many teams running quarterbacks under center and eye formations. Yeah. Now, if we see, uh, see the power eye come in there, I'll really be thrilled. <laughs> yeah, you want to see some old school, you need to go check out McKeesport. They, they still play that wing back and power option. You know, it's just Back to the George Smith days. You don't see but maybe out of four or five teams anymore. Penn Hill is now moving left to right. Doggers pass off the hands of Chase Barney. Yeah, like you're saying, Amir Key, six carries and 54 so far is what I have him at. He's now coming off for a breather. Looks like he's being replaced by Mitchell. And it'll be Mitchell, hops to the left, gets it across the 40 yard line, has a first down for the Indians, across the 30, and will be brought down at the 27 yard line and a penalty flag at the 37. It's a big gain there. We'll see what this penalty is. It's not usually in a very favorite spot for the offense. Yep. Holding against Penn Hills. Well, Mitchell gets a three yards. All that work for three yards. Yeah. Jewel straight drop, throwing downfield towards Jaden. And completing a penalty flag will come in. That was an obvious one. This will give Penn Hills a first down on the penalty. Yeah, if you're not running with the guy or looking back for the ball, they'll get you on that one every time. Yeah. 
Ball now inside the Shaler 30 at about the 28 yard line. Jameer Brown for a couple. Using the fullback there. Something uh, maybe the professional team nearby should uh, consider. Play action, throws underneath, pass complete inside the 15. Down close to about the 11 yard line. That's a first down for Cameron Thomas. And there's an injured Titan on the field. Take a break here with 10.40 to go. 7-3. The Indians on top of the Shaler area Titans. What was the pickup on that pass play? 14. Looks like it's on the, or is it at the 11? They're at the 11. Okay, 15. Well, this weather has been fantastic the entire season. We we're bound to get a night like tonight. Yeah, true. I mean, for it to come in week nine, I think we've been truly lucky. Key for a couple. Nice job with the Titans defense. Carson Pierce brings them down at the nine. Didn't allow him to get the uh, momentum going and running downhill, as they like to say, uh, bottled him up there close to the line of scrimmage, and he wasn't able to slip away that time like he had on a couple carries earlier. So, yep, good job by that Titan defense. They're going to have to tighten up a little bit more. No pun intended. Duggar throwing back in the end zone. Touchdown, Jaden Duggar. There's that connection again three times last week, and here's the first time this week. Nine-yard touchdown pass, Julian the Jaden, and the Indians have extended their lead. It's like they've been doing this all their lives. I don't know. I, I think they know each other. Or touchdown coming with 9.38 to go here in the first half. Indians now up 13 to three. Another dead ball penalty called there against Penn Hills. So that's going to go on the kickoff. Owen Williams will try the point after. And the kick is up and through. 
9.38 to go, first half. Penn Hills, 14. Shaler, three. You're watching the Penn Hills Indians Football Network. It needs 80 yards in nine plays. Aided by the pass interference call. And used up almost three and a half minutes. Very efficient. Able to get down the field very quickly, yes, and put those points on the board. Just trying to see this penalty total right now. So the Indians will kick off from their own 25-yard line. 55 yards and penalties so far against the Indians. That is not going to make Coach happy at all. Charlie Rosemeyer will kick off for Penn Hills. He's been doing the kickoffs, and Owen Williams is doing the point after. We'll send Shaler back to the 16-yard line. Orga looks for somewhere to go. And we'll go down about the 32-yard line, and a late penalty flag comes in. Comes another 15 yards against Penn Hills. Post-whistle activity. direction of that little tussle in the middle of the field. Yeah, I, I thought that was a foregone conclusion, but instead we've got 10 yards being marked off against Shaler. So now they'll start at their own 22. Shaler with their second possession here. So Tank has passed just too high for Miller. Well, almost hauled it in. And that'll bring up a second down for the Titans. Titans get the ball to start half number two. Hopefully the Indians can keep their heads here and not give first downs to the Titans unnecessarily. Make them earn them. So Tanka flush to his right, and he's going to throw that one away. Heads up play by Smetanka to get rid of it. Penalty flag back at the 13-yard line. Referees making their appearance known yeah, tonight. Checking on the replay, it looks like a block in the back. Not a very blatant one, or it was just a. There's a hand on the back. Mm. But we'll see if that's what the call is. Yeah, that's what they're calling. And they're going to call holding against Penn Hill, so we're going to replay the down. <clears throat> so it will remain second down from the 22-yard line.
or will it be? No, they called another. They called another penalty. They called another personal foul penalty because they got 15 yards. All right. Make up our minds here. They're going to need to get that cleaned up pretty quickly here. Playoffs starting in a couple weeks. Can't be having all these penalties. Smetanka keeps it himself. It's about four out to the 41 yard line. Mark with the 40, picks up three. Eight forty five running fourteen to three. Penn Hills here in the second quarter. Bill Navari along with Dean Delamalva. Great to have you along. It's great to be here. Spatanka loses a handle on it, falls on it back at the thirty yard line. There's that uh, well. Could be anyway. There's that wet football possibly causing havoc back here. Ten yard loss for the Titans. It's going to put them way behind the chains. Third and 17 coming up. This is where Ben Hills needs to behave. <laughs> <coughs> Screen pass. Matanka well, steps up in the pocket and he'll be sacked. We dropped back at the 27 yard line for loss of three. I think Penn Hills uses a timeout. Or yeah, it looked like they were trying to slip Miller out of the backfield again and dump it to him, but the Penn Hills pressure was there. But don't gathers the troops together. I think he's telling them no. Uh, don't run into the kicker. <laughs> no, no penalties, please. So the clock has stopped with 7:44 to go here in the first half. It needs up 14 to three. A couple of touchdown passes by Jules Duggar, first to Rand Strader, and the second to Jaden Duggar. And for Shaler, a 21-yard field goal by Jack Keenan. Another low snap. Miller gets a kick away, kicked it to himself. Took a pen he kicked it off an Indian and it came back to him. He tried to run. Pennells takes over at the 18. An opportunity for Penn Hills. <laughs> you see on the rush there, it was really kind of uh, interesting. They, they they were coming with the pressure, but they like almost like slowed up when they got close to him to make sure they weren't going to get an accidental penalty. Miller was able to pick up the ball, but he kicked it right into an Indian. But heads up on him, it came right back to him. He picked it up and he tried to, to tried to run, but Penn Hills brought him down. And now take over at the 18 yard line. And inside the five to the goal line, touchdown Penn Hills. Natel Mitchell, 18 yards. The Indians strike just like that. One play, that's all it took, 18 yard run. Found a crack on the right side there. And then it's just speed and then brute force to get across the final yard and a half 
for the Penn Hills touchdown. You see Mitchell after that, he was telling everybody, just back off, no celebrating, get away. <laughs> just walk off the field. We can do it on the sideline. Rosemeyer point after is good. Penn Hills 21, Shaler 3. That has to take the, uh, has to be a big blow to Shaler. Well, basically eight seconds just turned this game. Uh, you know, have a couple of bad snaps. Uh, resulting in a sack on one play and then another sack and then a bad snap on a punt. Uh, results in nine more yards lost and turning the ball back over to the Indians and they make them pay really quickly. 18 yard run by Nitel Mitchell and with seven and a half to go in the first half, Penn Hills is rolling early. Kickoff taken back to the two-yard line. Across the 20, out to the 24, Kate Norga. Great kickoff, man. You get one back there like that. Uh, he probably could have let that go into the end zone, but decided to bring it out and did get it out to the 24, so kudos to him on that. If you can kick like that, you, a lot of times you're going to give the opposition a really long field to take. And that's what Shaler's going to end up with here, 76 yards away from the end zone. Miller breaks a tackle, does a nice job to get across the 30 to the 31 yard line, a gain of seven. Trying to do a little scoreboard watching. I know tonight Penn Hills will be rooting for North Hills against Fox Chapel. But we'll be rooting for Fox Chapel next week against Pine Richland. A tangled web we weave. <laughs> Matanka rolls to his left, throws underneath, and the pass incomplete. Wow. It was meant for Carson Pierce. He had Di Sabato wide open behind the Pennell secondary. I don't know that he either had the um, positioning to, to fire that ball as far as it needed to go to hit him, but he was wide open. It would have been a touchdown. That was a holding call against Shaler. Pendles is going to take the mark off. I'm surprised. No. That's oh, they're going to decline referee it? Referee on the sideline here is saying no. Yes, yeah, so that's what I thought. It. Bring up a third and three. I think Pennell's just hoping to hold him here and get the ball back and score again. Yeah. And they really haven't had trouble getting up and down the field quickly. And the way Shaler's punting game has struggled snapping the ball, he may get another short field. Matanka throws right, has a man. Oh, almost picked off by Duggar, but no. It's caught by Shaler and up the sideline is Dom Rossi for a big first down for the Titans. Duggar tried to jump the route, didn't come up with it, and Rossi had some free range to pick up 25 yards. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, it's a tough play. It's a tough pass, you know. A lot of those do get picked and run the other way, but uh, they just missed it, and then you end up getting bit on the backside as he's able to break loose. Unable to connect with Orgar, Orga underneath.
You wonder if that play on that uh, third down and three would have been a different play call if it was third down and 13, or second down and 13 for that matter. On the decline penalty. Matanka rolls right, throws downfield, has a man caught for a first down. It was Dom Rossi. Gain of 11. Of course, Rossi was this team's quarterback a year ago. Converted over to wide receiver. Smotanka with the keeper wrapped up, thrown down for a loss of two. That was a key Parker. It's a loss of three. I mean, Shaler could score some points. They you know, the Kansas City scored 37, 25, 38. Were shut out twice, twice with 14. And last week they lost 42, 27. Correct. Yeah, they can definitely get up and down the field. Smetanka rolls, throws, pass. Oh, almost with the one-handed grab by De Sabato. That was a, almost a pretty catch. Yeah, he's he's been uh, he's been a key contributor to this team. De Sabato, as I said uh, at the beginning of the game, six catches for 155 last week. Um, he has got 388 yards on the season receiving. But here's a big third down for the Titans. They're going to need to convert this. That's what Tank will be sacked back at the 45-yard line. Coming off the corner was Keith Pellman. Just a speed rush right off the edge. Just completely blew up the uh, lineman over there. Never had a shot at it. And of course, Matanka never, never felt him coming until it was too late. Minus nine. Well, North Hills and Fox Chapel were scoreless after one. I just update on that was about 30 minutes ago. Miller gets the kick away. And Jaden will let it roll into the end zone wisely and take the touchback. So Pennells will start at their own 20 with 4.08 to go here in the half. Scoreboard says they have three timeouts left. I believe they only have two. They only have one. I think they only have one. That's right. They called a timeout before the punt down here. They have one timeout remaining. Fake to Amir Key. Duggar keeps it himself across the 30, 35. Cuts to the inside. Down across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Julian Duggar on the What we got here? Holding. Right, this one will come back. So he'll actually get three yards and we'll replay the down.
first the old first and seven. Duggar will throw, has a man up the sideline, Amir Cree across the 40 to 50. Key in a foot race. Still on his feet, drags. Shaler area tightens along with him to the 25 yard line. Big play broke open, nice little lobbed on the uh, running back, I guess that's a running back wheel route there from the looks of it. Yeah, 52 it yards. There. Lobbed it out there. He got it, and then he was turning on the Jets and even uh, even ran over a Shaler player uh, on his way all the way to the 25-yard line of the Titans. Big first down play, sets up another first down in plus territory. Pass this way, screen pass to Jaden. Cuts it to the inside, looks for some room to run. Gets inside the 20 to the 19. Pick up of six. Tough throw into traffic there. Jaden was able to corral it. Turn the field and get what looks like about seven. Second and about three. Jules tries to keep it himself, breaks a couple of tackles in the backfield, gets inside the tickets down to the 10. Ball got and he loses loose. the football, and Shaler comes up with it. He ended up trying to spin out of a tackle there, and he. It's always difficult when you start. His momentum turned him around. So he's basically got his back to the defense. And uh, they were able to knock the ball loose on the tackle. And turnover. 2.40 to go. Shaler takes over first and 10. So Tanka's pass. Ooh. Complete this way. And taking a shot. It was Joe DiSabato. Rayon Strader said, hello. And a penalty flag comes in. I don't know what you call a penalty on that. Maybe targeting, maybe. Uh, it was a pretty good it was a pretty good hit, but I don't, I don't know that it was worthy of a penalty either. He led with his shoulder. Looks like it caught him in the upper part of his chest. Bang bang play. That's what they get targeting there. I mean, that's why uh, big hits like that's the reason why there are uh, D1 schools looking at uh, Rayon Strader. I don't know, that was, that was just a good football hit. So Tanka throws right side. Miller looks for somewhere to go. He gets crunched out of bounds at the 32-yard line. For a short pickup of two. Stops the clock with 2.09 to go. And Penn Hill's up 21-3. I mentioned McKeesport earlier. Big game this week with Thomas Jefferson. Yes. 14-7 Tigers after one. A swing pass this way and another big hit by Rayon Strader. That's only a gain of one. Van Hills calls a timeout with two minutes to go. I don't know. We have to start calling Rayon the, the Terminator. 
Yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, I'm watching. You're watching a replay in here. I mean, he's just open field tackle and boom. Yep. Yeah, he's got. Uh, he's got some looks. He's got the. Uh, I think an offer from Akron in right now. And. Uh, like he, that, that's why, that's why he's able to tackle out in the open field. He's able to, to, to square those guys up and, and solidly hit them. Indians take their final time out of the half. With two minutes left here. And we face with a third six here for Shaler. Here, if we got any other. Oh, Thomas uh, Jefferson. We'll update that, that score. 21 all. 21 all. Boy, I, I never thought that that game would be, um, have that much scoring. Kiske and Pine Richland are tied at 14 just before halftime. What, did, what was that again? 14 14, Kiske and Pine Richland. Penos is saying, "Let's go, let's go, Kiski." Yeah, go. Only Kiske. problem with that is Penos has Kiski next week. Yeah, yeah, and that game is at Pine. So Tank is passed right side to Miller, and another hit. Rossi picks up about three. And they'll bring up a fourth down. Late penalty flag comes in. Not sportsmanlike against Penn Hills. How many penalty yards is that now for Penn Hills in this half? Oh my, I'm going to have to re add them up and get out my. Calculator for goodness sakes. We they, need to get out to an IBM uh, mainframe. They've got to be close to 90 yards, I believe. <laughs> Ball's now at the 48 of Penn Hills. So they would have been well short of the first down, but once again, due to penalty, Shaler gets another shot. I think that's the fourth first down via penalty. Yes. Matanka, straight drop, throws this way, and the pass unable to be held on to by Miller. Valiant effort. <clears throat> Laying it out there. Looks like, uh, you know, Weather doesn't seem to be affecting um, this passing attack. I mean, they have been able to make some uh, completions. Oh, here's a false start near side. So to mark that off against uh, Shaler. What's well, South Fayette up 21 7 over Upper St. Clair? <laughs> Things are definitely crazy. Seems everywhere. I think I also saw Ambridge beating Quaker Valley. They've, Ambridge has only won one game in how long? 
We'll take it down the sideline. The pass picked off by the Indians. Chase Barney was step for step and came up with it. Penn Hills will have it with 106 to go. All right, at their own 25 yard line, no timeouts left. Well, North Hills is up seven nothing with five seconds to go in the half. Ten yard touchdown run with five seconds to go. There you go. Getting them points before the half are usually very important. But a nice play there by Chase Barney on a jump ball, pretty much 50-50 ball thrown uh, by Smetanka down the sideline. And Barney able to get position and secure a turnover for Penn Hills. Gateway's up 48-0 at the half. Ooh. There are the Gators. I'm going to say hello to... My favorite doctor, David Fowler, is out there on the sidelines watching us on his phone. There we go. He's the orthopedic for both Gateway and Penn Hills and for use truly. Duggar hit as he threw. Fortunately for the Indians, the pass falls incomplete. It kind of just laid up there. Yeah. There was nobody in the area. You know, always get, you know, nervous when you see those balls just like go flying in the air. And, uh, and uh, you know, <laughs> you wonder who's going to come up with it. But that one, there was nobody there. So. Dogger over the middle pass behind Brendan Hill. Had him open. Just a little behind him here. Let's see what they try to dial up on third and ten here. As the first two plays have only taken them seven seconds off the clock. Duggar's flush is going to take off running and has some room and a blocker in front. Duggar will have the first down across the 40 and gets out of bounds at the 43 yard line. That's a first down for Penn Hills, close to midfield. Stops the clock by going out of bounds. Yeah, the clock, uh, you know, would have stopped momentarily, but they get the full effect of the go with it going out of bounds with him going out of bounds they get the full effect of the clock stop so they can not necessarily not that they can relax it's just that they can you know take their time get the play they want in and mark them back at the 41 sailor on the blitz Duggar steps up and the pass picked off at the 37 yard line Coming, jumping up and coming down with it was Corbin Seidick. That's another one of those throwing across your body type deals. Uh, of course, the lefty rolling out to his left and trying to come back to the center of the field. Typically doesn't have a good result, and in this case, did not have a good result. Turnover number two for the Indians, gives Shaler the ball at their own 40 with 53 ticks left in this first half. So Tank will throw a pass complete just across the 40 to the 42 yard line. James Sanders for two. Shayla will use the timeout, talk things over. You know, if they can score here, then score on their first possession of the second half, they get the opening kickoff. It'll be right back in this game. All of a sudden, you know, things start to swing. 
Yeah, things start to swing uh, their way if they're able to get 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 a point before the half. So second down and eight now for the Titans at their 42. Smetanka under pressure, flushed, throws this one high and away. And getting away with a, they got away with a hole, but now here's Penn Hills giving them yardage again. get together for a conference here. Thirty-nine seconds remain in the half. It'll probably take about eight minutes to figure this all out. <laughs> Officially halftime. McKeesport twenty-one. Thomas Jefferson twenty-one. I don't know. I have to be a little partial to TJ there. My son coaches their middle school program. Of course, McKeesport handed TJ their lone loss last year. Yeah. Resulted in that conference. I mean, it's just those three teams are Bell, Vernon, TJ, and McKeesport. They're, they're probably three of the top four teams in the state. And the only reason I say that is there has to be somebody <laughs> who, who might beat one of them. Uh, maybe Aliquippa, maybe. I don't know. But uh, it's just... So the recap on that is an intentional grounding call against Shaler and two personal fouls against Penn Hills. Was it, I thought it was personal foul and an unsportsmanlike. Yes. So they mark off against Shaler and then they're going to mark 30 yards off against Penn Hills. Did you get that machine to spit out that penalty yardage? Yet? 110 before this. So if this is going to be 30. I think they started at the. They started at the 23. Yes. So Penn Hills gets 30 yards. 
Shaler's grounding penalty took them back to the 23, which was 19 yards. And at the end of the day, the ball ends up on the Penn Hills 47. So now that's 140 yards of penalties in the first half for the Indians. Tanaka looks to his right, comes back to the left, tucks it up under, and he's going to run. It has a little bit of a lane across the 40, and out of bounds there. The It'll be short of the first down, but we'll stop the clock. In fact, we'll give him the 39 for a pickup of eight. You know, all these personal foul penalties and unsportsmanlike, you usually see that like at the beginning of the season. First game, second game, fired up. Like not, you typically don't see them in game nine. You know, when you're <laughs> trying to lock up a playoff spot and battle for a conference championship. Shayla will call a timeout with 31 seconds to go here in the half. Kind of a wasted timeout. You already had the clock stopped. Well, yeah, maybe they want to talk some things over here. Must not have liked what they saw. See what else we can drub up here on this Twitter spear. Armstrong and Plummer tied at 14. Smetanka looks right, throws right, and a pass incomplete. Yeah, Dom Rossi out there in the flat. They were unable to connect. Third down and two. Another short here. First half has been kind of laggy here, to say the least. Matanka pressured this way. And a pass caught by Coach B. <laughs> penalty flag comes in. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> hey, I'm just as surprised as you are. <laughs> Uh, they're going to call a rough or intentional grounding. It's one of the two. At this or point, both. That would not be surprised if it's both. Intentional grounding. Shaler. Lost it down. All right, so just the... Uh, Grounding here against Shaler will take it back to the 47. Of the Titans. Fourth and 16. Tanka launches one down the sideline and a pass intercepted by Duggar. Penhills takes over with 14 seconds to go in the half at the 30-yard line. 
Well, if you're Penn Hills, what do you do? Do you try to launch any down or you just take it to the locker room? Uh, I think you take it to the locker room here and just, uh, you know, try not to uh, add to the any more flag, drama here. The flag football game that's going on on the field. Yeah, right? literally. Keep checking my feed here, and I'm getting everything but scores. Uh, Mount Lebanon, 17, Seneca Valley, 0. Alex Tesca already has 105 yards and two touchdowns for Lebo. And Penn Hills will take it to the half, or take it to the locker room. Ah. Uh. What a, uh, what you an know, interesting uh, half. It, that half was exhausting. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just. I'm just making sure they get to the locker room before I even call. <laughs> call it. We don't need a late flag here, right before the half. I'm sure. No, I'm just, no they're walk. Everybody seems to be going heading off. Yes, I'm. I'm sure. Right now, Coach Ladon is just saying we need to clean this stuff up. End of the first half to score. Penn Hills 21. Shaler 3. Second half action coming your way next. You're watching the Penn Hills Indians football now.
Friday night with your coffee. I'm having a drink coffee. <laughs>
so he didn't, wasn't going to rent a place. I hear he does his own. No, no he's, he's, he's building a house down in Long Bay, across, across from Oak Park, mm -hmm. up the hill from Oak Park.
Second half action about to get underway here at Penn Hills Juhas McGinley Stadium with the score. The Indians 21, the Titans from Shaler 3. Dean Delamalva, probably the biggest statistical leader in that first half. Penalties. Referees uh, led the way uh, in the first half. Uh, 10 penalties against Penn Hills for 140 yards. Uh, six penalties against Shaler, 73 yards. Um, by comparison, uh, Keegan Smetanka threw for 84 yards in the first half. So the officials are out gaining Smetanka passing for Shaler thus far. Um, offensively for Penn Hills, Amir Key, 
Seven carries, 56 yards, and a 52-yard catch. Gets him over 100 yards of total offense. Nitel Mitchell, four carries, 38 yards, and a touchdown. Julian Duggar, uh, four rushes for 36. He's 6 of 13, throwing 103 yards, two tutties, and an interception. Uh, Jaden Duggar has one of those touchdowns. Rayon Strader, the other. Josh Miller has been held in check. Three carries for just five yards. And the leading receiver for Shaler is going to be Dom Rossi. Three catches for 39 yards. And we are underway here in half number two. Shaler, we'll get the ball to start the half. Now will take the opening kickoff and get it out across the 25, out close to the 30-yard line. He got his Miller on the return. Looks like they're marking him right at the 30. Miller does return it out to the 30-yard line. Uh, get points on the board before the half, but an interception ended their drive, so here comes their next possession. Miller for about three. about Shaler's ability to score and get up and down the field. Smetanka in the first half, 14 of 27 throwing. but still just only 84 yards. Miller again will have a first down. About the 41 yard line. Start for the Titans there. Nice nine yard carry for Miller. Gets Shaler a first down. Moving chains. Botch snap, fumble. Picked up by the Indians inside the 20 and it'll be first and goal, Penn Hills at the tag. Aki Parker comes up with it. Yeah, it looked like a bad exchange between the quarterback and the fullback there. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly where it happened. Took it from about the 39 to the 10 of Shaler. So Penn Hills. Knocking on the door here early in the third quarter. At the 10 yard line. Fourth Shaler turnover. Keeping it on the ground, down about the five yard line. This is Jameer Brown. there that uh, Penn Hills can use here. Jameer Brown getting an opportunity. Duggar, flush to his left, will throw towards the end zone and a pass too high. I think he was just throwing that away. Chase Barney was there, but. Yeah, Barney was well covered on that play. I don't uh, think he had the intention of Completing that, just wanted to make sure he 
got it near somebody. It looks like the rain has uh, momentarily ceased. Duggar will keep it himself. Rumbling from the five yards out. And Penn Hills extends the lead. Touchdown coming with 9.51 to go. Ten yard drive and three plays for Penn Hills. That was a quarterback keeper all the way. Duggar just went right behind his blockers and went basically untouched into the end zone. Nice design on that one. Gets him in for six and a quick drive off the turnover. Turns into quick points. Indians shoot the fire. Duggar unable to get. I'm not sure what the heck happened there. So the score remains, Penn Hills 27, Shaler 3. Owen Williams was on to do the point after. I think Duggar was just unable to put the uh, snap was high. He was unable to get it cleanly on the ground from yeah, from Williams to a, kick. There was a uh, Shaler edge rusher pretty darn close in there that uh, he may have saw as a threat and decided to just uh, try to run it home. But regardless, Penn Hills extends the lead to 27 2 3. <laughs> Penn Hills band putting on a show on the sideline. Along the track. Rosemeyer. Kick high. Taken at the five by Miller. Looks for somewhere to go. Tries to go right. He gets tripped up and goes down inside the 20, about the 17 yard line. Gregory Vinay with the tackle for Penn Hills. start their now second possession of the second half is some pretty bad field position here at their own 17. Fox Chapel now trails North Hill 7-3 in the third quarter. That's one the Indians are watching. Miller for about five. Another tackle for Strader. He's been all over the field tonight defensively for the Indians. Right, Indians up. Uh, North Hills Indians up 14 to 3 now. Uh, they're setting Jaden Duggar off for an equipment issue. McKeesport has scored twice in the second half. They lead Thomas Jefferson 35-21. 3.30 left third quarter. Toss this way. Looking for a lane. Uh, open but closed quickly. That was Tim Agbali. Picks up four to be third and one. Another nice run. Shaler will take those uh, four to five yards of carry. Haven't been able to get it much going all night, but uh, here in the second half they have uh, actually run the ball fairly decently aside from the uh, fumble. 
Fullback dive, Augie Tortoria gets the first down. Doesn't get a lot, but gets the first down. Two to the 28 for Augie. Junior fullback, 5'10", 220. Toss, right side. Agbali again. And he might pick up four or five yards. from the 32, so that's four yards. Agbali again gets wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Goes nowhere. Luke Puglise. Along with Khalil Barley Morrow. No room to run that time. Penn Hill's D-line stopped the middle. Forced him backwards for a one-yard loss. Let's see what the they dial up here on third down. They need seven, so. Matanka rolls this way, throws underneath. And Tortoria was separated by Alan Parker with the football. Probably better to pass one incomplete anyway. Probably been about a five yard loss. Yeah, plenty of pressure coming from the backside. Had him running for his life basically out here to this side. Up the middle pressure as well. And didn't have anybody open. Good job coverage there by the Penn Hill secondary. Well, punting has been an adventure tonight for Shaler. And again, another low snap, but Miller gets the kick away. Picked up by Chase Barney. Comes this way across the 50, the 45. Stiffs are on a man at the 40, and that's about all he gets. Nice return, 19 yards. Once again, another possession that is going to start in Shaler territory for Penn Hills. USC down to South Fayette. 28-13, 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. It's been just a crazy season. It's just been, yeah, cra I, 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 it's been very hard to, to predict. The way some of these games are going. Key, stiff arms a man at the 40, goes up the sideline side to 30, the 20. Key inside the 10, first and goal. Penn Hills at the six yard line. There's that explosion, explosion of speed. 34 more for Amir Key. And it sets them up on the doorstep. First and goal at the Shaler six. End of the third quarter. Kiski, 24, Pine Richland, 21. Wow. That would uh, greatly benefit the Indians. Right now, tonight, I think the Indians are, vote, are rooting for the Indians and the Cavaliers. Especially the Cavaliers. Especially the Cavaliers. 
The only problem is the Indians will have the Cavaliers next week. Key for two, wrapped up by Anthony Mazza. And it'll be second and goal, Indians. Luke Puglisi and a fullback gets the carry. Puglisi drives to the end zone. Touchdown, Penn Hills. Luke Puglisi, oh, 6'2", 275 pounds of him, gets in from four yards out, and Penn Hills extends the lead. The refrigerator play. How about that? How about that? Good for him. You always got to love when the non-traditional players get a chance to score. And there you go. Let a lineman at fullback and let him take it in. Why not? Owen oh, Williams misses his first point after the season. So the score remains. Penn Hills 33, Shaler 3 here on the Penn Hills Indians Football Network. Sit uh, plus 30 right now. Penn Hills can hold and score again. A little clock run will take place here. 440 left in the third quarter. Threes are wild right now. 33 to three, third quarter. Oh my. Shaler with a nice return out across the 25, close to the 30 yard line. Nice return there for Josh Miller. He had a lot of room out there to the right. Special teams was able to track him down before he did too much damage, but still got clear out to the 30. Pass low. Moon wins again, 30 zip. That was over Bethel Park. That was supposed to be their best challenge. And no thank you. Moon is rolling. Pass complete near side. And maybe about four yards for Miller. This be the bread and butter play, that little swing pass out in the flat. We get like three yards on it though. It hasn't been something that, uh, you know, has been able to get them loose, get them turning up the field, getting them some extra yards. And they're still stuck in this third and medium here now. They go the other way. Miller does a nice job to haul the pass in. Uh, picks up another four. It'll be fourth and two. Fourth 
I really don't understand on a possession down why you throw a pass short of the marker. Tank a flush, rolls to his right, throws. Pass caught, first down, Shaler at the 47 yard line. Coming up with it was TJ Bells. So the question is, is that a uh, purposeful short throw on the comebacker? Uh, he was, Spatanka was being flushed, so I think he was throwing that one up for grabs. And it was fourth down, so. And he rifled that one in there to Dom Rossi for eight yards. Four straight completions there for Smetanka. But all you jinxed them. Yeah. Sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but he gets to uh, fight another day. TJ's answered with a touchdown. They're now down by seven with six and a half to go in the game. Pass complete on the near side. To Miller. I think it'll be short of the first down. It'll bring up a first, uh, fourth down. A Kendrick Starkey with the exclamation point. Tank it rolls, so you flushed, sacked, brought down back at the 50 yard line by Keith Pellman. I think that's his second sack tonight, is it not? I believe. Shaler turns the ball over on downs to Penn Hills with 1 11 to go here in quarter number three. Shaler had uh, something going there. Was able to penetrate the Penn Hill side of the stadium, uh, side of the field, but uh, fourth down sack turns it over on downs, and here come the Indians back out on offense. Plus 30 already, looking for more. Big hole, big carry this way. Natel Mitchell across the 30, inside the 30, down to the 26-yard line. 24 yards for Mitchell. All kind of room once he broke the first layer. Out there to the right side. 23. Key inside the 25, cuts it across the 20, inside the 15, 10, 5, touchdown Amir Key! What an effort. 
What an effort. Couple of juke moves here on the near sideline. And then it was all speed and strength. Down the sideline. Good night. Touchdown, <laughs> Amir Key. Penn Hills will get the running clock. High snap, kick up, kick good. 29 seconds to go, third quarter. Penn Hills 40, Shaler 3. You're watching the Penn Hills Indians Football Network. Penn Hills touchdown drive, two plays, 50 yards. That is the definition of efficient. That is. <laughs> and the thing is now, we should have a very quick fourth quarter because we now have the running clock. Yes. Yes, that would be uh, the case here as just 29 seconds left in the third. So looks like Penn Hills is going to advance their record to 3-1 and one in conference and sit on top pending some other results around. Looks like we have a 17-10 score, North Hills. 6.48 left. Hi, kickoff taken at the seven. Miller looks for somewhere to go, comes up the sideline on the near side and gets pushed out of bounds. Like Matthew Lemon. So they were started at their own 23. They trailed by 37. This game was seven to three at one point. It was. Uh, first. Two possessions of the game. Penn Hill was able to score a touchdown. Shaler answered with a field goal. But then, once again, it was Penn Hill's able to score again, get ahead despite a first half full of penalties. And we actually have not seen a flag here in the second half as I knock on wood. Rizzo with the carry for Shaler, and that'll do it for the third quarter. End of three. Score, Penn Hills 40. Shaler three. Looks like Penn Hills is going to be getting their Gardner points. Oh, they're going to get a few. A few more. Central Valley, 43 to six over Avonworth. Avonworth scored on the final play of the game. Uh, Upper St. Clair has come back. It's now 28-21. South Fayette, 9.46 to go. Well, you know the score we're looking for. Matanka, this way, steps, launches, throws, has a man behind the defense, caught. First down, Dom Rossi in Penn Hills territory at the 35-yard line. It's a 39-yard hookup. Rossi's been his target tonight. His most consistent target tonight. 
He had three catches in 39 in the first half, and now he's got a couple here in the second. That was a big one, all the way down to the 35 of Penn Hills. Nathan Razzo for a tough yard. No update from Pine Richland, though, huh? Welcome. Digging, digging, digging. The tank, a flush this way by Pellman. Still chases him to pass. Bobbled and caught and brought down at the 21-yard line by T.J. Bells. That'll be a first down. Matanka flush this way. And that should be grounding. The closest guy was a lineman. minutes ago. Kiske has tied the game with 7.20 left. Game tied at 27. High Richland scored on the first play of the fourth quarter. Take a 27-24 lead, but then a field goal, 41 yards by Cody Dykes has tied the game at 27, 722, 720 left. Tied at 27. So they did get tagged for the groundies. Patanka, left side, Razzo. And gets hit out of bounds. Yeah, bring up a fourth down. Worth it a lot here. The trailer 25 ish. Yeah, 25. Smotanka down the sideline, has a man, and a pass picked off by the Indians. No, it's caught. And no, no it's incomplete. incomplete. They'll turn the ball over on downs with 7.54 to go. I surmise we should see a lot of clean jerseys in for the Indians. 
for your younger kids at home, that goes back to the days when we played on grass. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, there's always, well, not always. Still scuff up a jersey, I'm sure, but uh, <laughs> not like they're, uh, or if you're, you know, in, in Class A, a lot of times you still play on grass, but. Uh, It needs to get tagged for five. That Lavelle Peters in for the Indians? I believe so. Yes, it is. Another one. Another false start. You know, I think Penn Hills will take a whole bunch of these if it means running 40 seconds off the clock. <laughs> yeah. First and 20, and Penn Hills has already killed a minute. Of course, the clock is running. Under seven minutes to go here. Mitchell cuts it back, tries to go somewhere. Kiski does a nice job of containing him, going picking up one yard. Scored again. Curious to see when the Indians will snap this clock. It's 12 seconds on the play clock. I should be telling Peter snap this at two, but he snaps it at six. Throws right side, incomplete, but the clock will continue to run. I'll bring up third down. Penel should just run it down about five minutes before they have to snap this ball. Oh boy, I'm gonna report the bad news out in North Hills. Robert Dickerson left the game on a stretcher. Apparent leg injury of some sort. Peters keeps it himself up the sideline across the 30, the 35 40. And gets hit out of bounds. Gets smacked by Matthew Supa. Final score, McKeesport 42, Thomas Jefferson 28. So that sets up Big 8 Conference showdown next week for the conference title between McKeesport and Bell Vernon. Fox Chapel was just stopped. An interception. 113 to go. North Hills up 17-10. Peters gets the first down and more. Cuts it back to the near side. Across the 40. The 35 to 30. Peters has a lane and he's going to go for the Penn Hills touchdown. Lavelle Peters, 61 yards for the touchdown. But uh, there's a piece of laundry on the field. And back at the 37 is a yellow flag.
Peters comes this way. Shaler closes. But the clock will continue to run as it brings up a fourth down. Excuse me, that was fourth down, wasn't it? So Penos turns the ball over on downs. The Penos punted all tonight? No. I think they did. Oh, Shaler with it at the 29 yard line. Clock running at 3.20 to go here in the game. Razo, maybe about three. Entra Plowden brings him down. The Penn Hills second team defense playing well. Ball's out. And the Indians have it. Coming with 2.26 to go. I think at this point for your Penn Hill is you can just just take the knees and get out of here. Yeah, 2.26. So we all can go home. That, yep. That would be my plan. By the way, before I forget, I have to say happy birthday to our Scoreboard operator, Scott Caracato on Monday. Also to our producer and camera person, Helen, who shuns the spotlight. <laughs> I got interviewed by USA Today today. You did? Yeah. For, for fun or fun? Was <laughs> social media stuff. Oh yeah. So I'll be curious. He called me from San Francisco. I mean, they have an office like around here. <laughs> <laughs> you would think that'd be the local people, you know. You could see that thing maybe. Uh, Was that? You could see that, you know, on in Mondays, or you could see it in the paper, like you know, a month and a half from now. It's USA Today. They, you know. Oh, we'll see. I had to send them a photo. Did you pick a good one? What's that? Did you pick a good one? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I sent a picture of Thor. <laughs> yes. Good idea. Throwing a pass here. <laughs> pass complete this way. Running wildly with a glean is Martel Palmer. And Palmer will have a first down. New quarterback in is Steve Vandiver. Or Vandiver. Got a little salt in the wound there throwing a pass. Of course, they get victimized by a holding penalty here. These referees trying to make this game last like extra long or what? What's the deal here? I don't know. They could have let the clock wind out there. Clock running now close to 30 seconds. 40 to 3 Penn Hills.
Fennell's definitely killing some clock on this one. Coming up the sideline with a little bit of a lane and out of bounds, finally. That's Khalil Cotton with the reception. That looks like and that should be the final play of the game, and the clock does indeed wind down. Your final score, Penn Hills 40, Shaler 3. Uh, what do you... Uh, I got... Uh, uh, Brooke Eastburn, 29-yard touchdown run with 2.09 left, gives Pine Richland a 33-27 lead. They went for two and failed. So, <laughs> conceivably, Kiske can win it with a touchdown and an extra point. And they've already hit a field goal today, so we know they've got a kicker. Yeah, that they do. You know, so, interesting there. Said North Hills looked like they were closing in on the victory. That would be the other domino that needs to fall for Penn Hills. Well, after tonight, it would be a three way tie in the conference instead of four. Right, because you Because Fox, Fox Chapel, Chapel and, and North Hills are meeting each other. And one of them is going to have to, will have to lose. Yeah, so pretty, uh, pretty solid performance for the Indians tonight, coming up with a 40 to three win. Wasn't pretty though. No, especially in the first half, a lot of penalties. Um, they end the night. They only had four in the second half, so um, tighten things up a little bit. Uh, 14 penalties for 170 yards on the game. Still is nothing really great at all. Um, but able to get uh, three second-half touchdowns, um, pushing this game into the mercy roll. Julian Duggar, a five-yard run. The big guy, Luke Puglis, with a four-yard touchdown run. And Amir Key, 27 yards uh, out for him, capping the scoring 40-3. to three. Penn Hills over Shaler. Luke Puliglis, a twinkle toes, we'll call him. <laughs> Rumbled in from four yards. That's got to be the highlight of the game. I mean, Penn Hills was up 7-0, seven 7-3. Seven it was 21-3 at the half. And then all Penn Hills in half number two. Penn Hills missed a couple of extra points. Uh, you know, they scored uh, about 19 points in the second half, uh, keeping Shaler off the board. So Pendles keeps their Gardner points. Uh, the tie, the three-way tie, which I believe should be if things remain as they are between Pine, Richland, Penn Hills, and North Hills, Penn Hills would be on top with the Gardner points. <coughs> so, uh, you know, everybody just needs to keep doing what they're doing, but it certainly doesn't get easier for Penn Hills. They'll play Kiske next week, who is battling it with Pine, Richland yeah, at the they, moment. They're down by six. They just fumbled. Kiske just fumbled. Pine Richland recovers with a minute seven to go, uh, according to a report. So looks like the Rams are going to hold on for dear life. As a matter of fact, yes, the game's just gone final. 33-27, Pine Richland, and North Hills holds off Fox Chapel 17-10. to So there is the three-way tie between the Indians, the Indians, and the Valiers. So the big stat leader tonight was the uh, officials with the penalty yardage. <laughs> yes. Yep. They, they also handed quite a few out to Shaler as well. Um, they had eight penalties, I believe, for close to 100 yards called against them as well. So um, while not totally balanced, still a, still a heavy advantage. Uh, Julian Duggar has a, a solid game. Uh, throws for two, runs for one. Amir Key. Um, over 150 yards of total offense tonight. Uh, big game for him on the ground, and one catch for 52. So, pretty good, pretty pretty big game for Amir Key. So the Indians who got a lot, uh, a lot of these guys didn't play last week. They got them back in action this week, and uh, they all did very well. So, as we said, the Indians now uh, winners of five of their last six, while. 
those Titans have now lost what, six straight after winning their first two. Seven. Seven straight, excuse me. Two That's and right, seven. Right, nine. Two and seven, 0 oh and four in conference. And Penn Hills improves to five and three overall, three and one. So the conference will be decided one way or another next Friday night with none of the top three teams playing each other. Yeah, which means it'll probably be decided by a computer and a calculator. Or a coin toss. But regardless, Penn Hills is one of those teams. So yes, they uh, will be. And they're certainly hoping for a bye. Yes, top two. Top, top, top four two. teams, I think, would have top four seeds get buys. Yes, so I think it's the uh, top four seeds get buys, and then um, whoever the second team out of each conference will get a home game, I believe. So those are always important, especially in the postseason, to be playing in the friendly confines of your own stadium. Once again, the final score from Penn Hills, Uhas McGinley Stadium. The Indians defeat the Titans by a score of 40 to 3 from our broadcast partner, Dean Delamalva, and the rest of the folks here at the uh, Penn Hills press box. I'm Bill Navari. Thank you all for watching Penn Hills Indians football. We will see you next week from Kiski area here on the Indians Football Network. Good night.